What's up guys, you're watching Li-Fi TCG. Just got an update for my Tortured Existence deck from Guilds of Ravnica. So, uh, obviously the set has a Golgari theme, uh, black green. And there's a few new black green cards with a graveyard theme. So it seems like the, the set might have some new cards for this list. So, I uh, just want to quickly go through and talk about where I'm at with the deck right now uh, and talk about some of the new cards which I uh, some of which I think are playable and some of which I think might not be so good uh, along with just a few other new updates to the deck that I've made so uh, I'll just get into the list quickly for Golgari Guildgate I like this new art for it, I think it's cool uh, I'm gonna try pick up those uh, Golgari guild kit as well so I can get the basic lands with the sweet out. So four jungle hollow, three Golgari rock farm, four forest, and eight swamps. the creatures, oh sorry, I'll do the spells first, for commune, for torture existence, and for vessel of nascency, the maximum number of dig spells, or at least the, uh, <laughs> the good ones, and for tortured existence, so onto the creatures, for putrid ledge, Three Crip Rats, three Bogari Brownsko, two Fumes for that, two Stinkweed Imp, and then I'm trying to remember what was the last version I posted. Let me just check. Okay, so I have two Frozen Tusker. Oh well, yeah, we always had that in the latest, uh, the most recent version as well. Uh, and I have two Horror of the Broken Lands now. I think before I only had one. So the reason for this change is that um, the cycling is really good, uh, like in the early game, just having the flexibility to be able to trade it in for a new card, um, and then if you want to dig through your deck more quickly you can return it with Tortured Existence and keep cycling it as well. And then in the late game it's just uh, one of the more powerful finishes Sometimes uh, when you have, when you're facing down a more aggressive deck, you don't have the life total to be able to you know, use Crip Rats in the way that you want, um, or you might be uh, trying to play around like Rap and Vigor and stuff like that. So uh, it, it felt okay to just play a second copy of this. Uh, I think either two or one is correct. I could uh, see cutting it back to one in the future, but I'm happy with two at the moment. Uh, and then one skeleton and one yeah, my Elder, we've played those in the past as well. So two Spore Frog. I think in the most recent version of the list that I posted I wasn't playing this main deck. Um, I just think that there's too many like creature combo decks in Pauper that use the combat step and are playing basically no removal. So uh, Heroic is one, Slivers is another one, um, Elves pretty much as well, I mean they do have Longbow sometimes made, uh, usually in their sideboard, but you know, Spoolfrog is good enough there. Um, so Slivers, Heroic, uh, Elves, Boggles, um, 
like even if it was just these that would probably be enough some weird people might be trying to play infect uh oh yeah is it is it blitz it's another really good one as well um Tribe, Tars Tribe, yeah, really good there too. Uh, Alright, so that's like 7 decks. Yeah, maybe there's even more, but we can just stop there. So, Spore Frog is not against, not to play against like Delver and Boros and stuff. Um, it's just a tool that you use versus decks that can't kill it. Um, it's not meant to be your plan A versus decks that can kill it. Um, and even though um, it is kind of narrow, like it's not good against, uh, I don't think it's very good against Delver or Boros or any kind of mid-range deck like uh, Mono Black Control or like the legit control decks like Tron, it's obviously awful. Um, I just think that like the percentages it gives you in those matchups where your opponent is trying to like aggro combo you out super fast. Um, it's just worth playing two main deck and I have more on the sideboard as well. So, two, two Spore Frog main deck. I think the correct number you want to play main deck is either two or three. Uh, but I'm happy with two for now. Whoops. So, oh, what did I cut? Okay, yeah, so I cut the Sinuous Vermin. Sinuous Vermin's gone from the main deck. Um, it's a fine card, it's just too, uh, a bit too inefficient, uh, not really doing what I wanted it to. I cut the Caustic Caterpillar from the main deck, uh, just too narrow and weak, not necessary. I've got a second uh, Wickabout Elder on the sideboard now. Um, the Penumbra Spiders moved to the board. Um, and I cut the Grave Scrambler. So yeah, let's talk about that uh, for now. So the the thing I keep noticing with Grave Scrambler is it's just uh, it's like it's a really good card advantage, but um, it's just overkill. You you never really need to like because you're already drawing a guaranteed to draw a creature every turn in your draw set anyway because you have dredges, and then when you uh, Scrabble that you're getting two more creatures back so like you never if you had the mana to like use everything you were scrabbling back um, you were just so far ahead in the game that like the extra card advantage wasn't even that important and if you didn't have the mana to use everything you were bringing back then Grave Scrabbler was just kind of pointless um, because you're getting all this card advantage but you couldn't do anything with it um, and then it was just a terrible card if you didn't have a tortured existence online right it's a four mana two two vanilla so what I'm playing now I have no scrabblers I still have one skeleton and I have two gorgon recluse so what this does is a it's a five mana Two four menace. No, oh, sorry, not menace. Uh, madness. <laughs> um, it has madness for double black, um, and it also has an ability that's kind of like the basilisk death touch. So if it blocks or becomes blocked by a non-black creature, um, you destroy it at end of combat. Um, and in some ways. Uh, worse than actual death touch mostly because uh, the non-black claws like it can't kill a gourmet angler for example um, but in a lot of ways this ability is like significantly better than real death touch so the one most one important thing is that it goes through first strike so if your opponent attacks you with like a slippery boggle that has a big ethereal armor on it, your Gorgon Recluse will still kill it. Um, so that's pretty significant as well. The other thing is that because it doesn't need the damage to actually happen, it goes through prismatic strands. 
um, which is like a minor benefit as well. Um, but the the really um, cool thing about this effect is the fact that um, because it doesn't need the damage to happen, it's like a really good combo with Spore Frog. So the the problem with the Spore Frog lock, like in general, is that like say your opponent has a really big creature. Um, I don't know why it's in Bringer in a former video, but this is just like the biggest creature I could find on my desk. Um, your your opponent has an Inbringer, right? And it's about to kill you. You can pretend it's like a... I don't know. Can we find a bigger Eldrazi? I don't know why I even care. M Mershon. Okay, your opponent has an Inbringer and a Sphinx and a Dragon, there you go, okay. So your opponent, your opponent has a big board, and you have a Spore Frog. So, uh, even though your opponent knows that if they attack, they're not going to do any damage, they're still going to attack, because you have, have to sacrifice the Spore Frog at the end. Um, And that costs you a card every turn to bring it back. So So in your turn you have these in your graveyard and you dredge this and you mill two and then you discard this and then you get this back and then you play it. So uh, you skip your draw step to get a Spore Frog. So you're not advancing your board position at all. Um, you're just making a Spore Frog, and then next turn your opponent just attacks you again. Uh, and then you have to sacrifice Spore Frog again. Now you're stuck. So the way the way the deck normally gets out of this is with um, Crows and Tusker. So. Uh, what happens then is that you now you dredge uh, dredge the brown scale. You re discard it to return Cross and Tusker. You cycle Cross and Tusker, finding a land, and then on the draw of the dredge. On the draw of the cycling of the Crescent Tusker, you dredge the brown scale again. And now you uh, discard the brown scale. And return the Spore Frog. And then you play the Spore Frog again. So you got a Spore Frog down, but you also gained a land. So eventually, what happens is that you can find your Sanitarium Skeleton. Or you will have enough mana that you can. Um, at some point return a uh, crit rats and you can just activate it and destroy all this stuff so that's uh one way that the deck can break out of the uh this like fog lock that you put yourself in um but the problem with that is um often your opponent's um Your opponent's creatures are too hard to deal with with Crypt Rats, like if it's a boggle with a Ancestral Mark on it, Ancestral Mask, um, you're just never going to be able to kill it with a Crypt Rats activation. Um, so like you're basically stuck fogging forever, um, which is sometimes fine, like against Slivers, for example. Um, uh, yeah, like you are a bit stuck. So, um, in the past, what you could do is um, you just like rather than returning uh, Crows and Tusker, you dredge Brown Scale and then you return Scrabbler, and then you Scrabbler back the Frog and another thing, and then you can win with the other thing. But like I said before, uh, Scrabbler comes with all its own uh, downsides. So. Um, 
So now we have the Gorgon Recluse. So how this helps is that if you have Gorgon Recluse out and Spore Frog, um, before what would happen is that your opponent attacks and you just uh, eat, have to eat your Spore Frog. Now what happens is that because Gorgon Recluse um, doesn't need combat damage for its trigger to go off, and because you'll prevent all the damage done to the Gorgon Recluse by the Spore Frog, if your opponent attacks, you block something with the Gorgon Recluse, and then you activate your Spore Frog, and then their thing dies to the trigger, and your thing doesn't die because it prevents the combat damage. So essentially, like not only did you prevent all the damage from uh, whatever else creature they had, but your uh, Spore Frog basically traded for their best guy. So if you're in this situation, either um, you return Spore Frog every turn, but it's uh, destroying their best creature every time, so you're not uh, upset about that. Or you have the this combo in play, Spore Frog plus Gorgon Recluse, and then they just choose not to attack you, right? Because they're going to be sacrificing uh, their valuable creatures, so they might try and wait until they find a removal or do something else, um, and that gives you time. Then you have then your Spore Frog just sits in play, so you haven't sacrificed it, so you can actually use your draw step on advancing your own board state. Um, this is like a really important combo to be able to have access to in the matchups where Spore Frog is good. Um, and the other thing about the Gorgon Recluse is it's just a way stronger board presence than Grave Scrabbler. Um, being a 2 4 means that it doesn't die to Lightning Bolt. Um, it, it's way better at being aggressive versus things like Core Skyfisher and Clinthorpe. Um, you know, like it outright kills a ninja, doesn't just trade with it. Uh, and obviously, yeah, not dying to Bolt in those matchups is really good as well. Um, yeah. So the Spore Frog combo. Uh, and just having like a death touch blocker with flash effectively when you have tortured existence in, out is just a powerful tool to have the double black can be slightly awkward sometimes because you need one black to activate tortured existence and then double black um so use it but the mana base was already like quite heavily skewed towards black anyway because you're trying to maximize your tortured existence activations per game, so it's not usually too difficult to do, uh, use. And then just but the fact that it's a madness creature with tortured existence is already providing you some degree of card advantage, um, similar to Grave Scrabbler, so you're not losing too much uh, in that regard. Four Toughness is also nice because it survives uh, most Crip Rats activations. So yeah, that's my uh, update for Gorgon Recluse. So apart from the new art Guildgate, we haven't seen any new cards yet. So I've got uh, one more slot that I haven't showed you. Um, this is a Moodmark Painter. So what this does is it's a 4 mana 2-3 human shaman. When it enters the battlefield, you choose target creature, and that creature gets menace and plus x plus 0 um, until end of turn, uh, where x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So this and um, the Rhizome Lurcher, uh, two cards that people have been talking about for this deck, um, So I, I haven't played too many games with this yet, um, but overall I would say that I think it's 
probably unnecessary. Um, the floor on this is quite poor, like a, two, a 4 mana 2-3 is not good. Um, and then it's kind of difficult to imagine a situation where this effect is uh, necessary or, you know, like essential, use, uh, useful even. Um, it's quite good with this, right, because uh, if you want to buff up a creature, you probably want it to be something that has high toughness, so it's harder for them to kill it in response. Um, and also, if they have to block it with two things, they're both guaranteed to die because of the trigger. Um, but then, yeah, like it just doesn't seem like there's any situation where this is necessary. Like, this deck doesn't really race almost never um, so either you know you're ahead on cards basically and you can if you want to win with a big creature you can just bring back the horror and use that or you're behind uh, and this card just obviously doesn't do anything in those situations so um, I'll keep testing this to see if there's spots where it's good um, it, maybe it helps you close the game like in a short amount of time, but I don't really think that's necessary. And the horror already kind of does that for you anyway. Um, and that's basically the same reason why I don't think Rhizome Lurcher is good. Um, like 4 mana is too close to 5. Um, and the flexibility of having cycling on the horror is uh, way too good just compared to being a vanilla creature. I suppose Rhizome Lurcher is a better top deck than Horror if you don't have Tortured Existence in play, but uh, I don't think that's worth playing um, just a 4 mana vanilla creature. Excuse me. So yeah, that's my opinion on the Undergrowth cards. If I, if I turn out not liking this, um, then I'm going to replace this with the Liliana Spectre again. Uh, I think that card's fine. The, the other option is to replace this. Uh, so keep playing Mood Mark. Play one Mood Mark, one Horror, and one Spectre. That would also be another split that I could see being acceptable. But uh, so far I don't see the need for this. Uh, and the sideboard. So I moved the Spider. Um, to the sideboard from the main deck. It's just one of the best cards against blue red. Um, the thought of the black rose in the side is still good. I can't. Remember. I'm not too sure what my old sideboard was. I've got two wicker power elders now. Uh, I think this is just the best um, artifact enchantment hate the deck can play. Versus affinity being a four four is way too good compared to. Um, Costa Caterpillar. The body is really important, and the uh, you can reset um, the this effect with uh, Fuse Spitter. So like Caterpillar seems appealing, right? Because it when you activate it, it dies, so you can bring it back and use it again. But you can still use this again um, with the Fuse Spitters, um, and even though. It seems like a non-bow or whatever to leave Fume Spitter in your deck versus like Boggles, for example, where it doesn't really kill anything. Um, just the combo of being able to recharge um, your Book About Outer is worth it um, because you have a lot of you have a lot of cards to board out in those matchups because you're never going to win a game versus Boggles by like future leap speed downs or whatever. So it's fine. Uh, then we have the other two, Spore Frog, um, just in the matchups where Spore Frog is good, it's like one of the best cards. So I want to have access to the full playset, I think. Um, three Fairy Macabre, good against Tron and any like Exhumed deck. Three Dead Wipe. Um, I've been thinking about this slot recently, because I've been having a bit of trouble against Burn. Um, so I really want it to be something that can kill Thermo Alchemist, 
but a lot of people are not playing the Doom Alchemist version at the moment. Um, and being having one mana removal is really important versus decks like Delva. Um, because the only other alternative I can think of to replace this with would be something like Seal of Doom. Which uh, does kill the Thermo Alchemist. Um, but is too expensive, possibly too expensive versus decks like Delva. Um, I think you definitely still want it to be a, something that's an enchantment, so your communes and your um, your communes and your vessels can hit it, um, compared to like a grasp of darkness kind of effect. Um, but that that would also be another possible option that's worth considering. Um, but I do think you want some kind of cheap removal in the sideboard. Uh, one Ruthless Ripper. This is kind of like a throwaway slot, like I don't think it's really necessary versus anything. Um, versus mid-range decks that play big ground creatures, it's just like an efficient blocker. And that it can be another threat versus control decks, because you can keep uh, looping it to burn them out. Um, and then we actually do have two more new cards in the sideboard. So from Guilds of Ravnica we have, uh, I'm not sure what's the official way you pronounce this, is it, it's either Crawl, Crawl Foragers? I don't think I want to call it Crawl Foragers, I think I'm going to call it Crawl Foragers. You know what, Crawl Foragers um, is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four insect scout. When you when it comes to play, you gain one life for every creature in your graveyard. So this is definitely less exciting than the huge power undergrowth creatures like the Rhizome Lurcher and the Moonmark Painter. But I think this might actually be the best uh, undergrowth card in the set. I was uh, listening to one of the Pauper podcasts. I think it might have been properly rated, and one of the guy picked this as his like best the best common in the set for Borba. Um I think that's sort of like worked out to be not true. I think that answer's probably devious cover-up or maybe hypothesis all, but uh, I'll do it, might, might do a devious cover-up video after this one. But the uh, this, the Forages is really good. So you can, so the, Nor to the Bone is sort of like what I cut to test these. Um, and Nor to the Bone is like pretty good against Burn because obviously against Burn all you want to do is gain life. Um, and Nor to the Bone gains you two life per creature in your graveyard, and this one only gains you one life. So, in a way, this is almost like only half as good against Burn. Um, and that's a matchup where I just said I needed some more help. So, just to sort of go over this, like, if you can survive, like, to a decent late game situation. This deck is really good against Burn. Um, just because like the interaction between well having Golgari Brown Scale in your deck is a huge uh, boon just to start with. Right. Like it's very hard for a burn deck to beat this combo um, as long as you have any decent number of mana available. Um, the problem is that if Burn gets like a very fast draw, you can die before you can set that up. Um, and because you don't really have the removal, especially for the Thermo Alchemist, um, you can often lose the game in uh, short order. So, Nor to the Bone almost doesn't help versus that situation either. Like, there are obviously are spots where it is good um, and not win more. Like, it's actually the perfect card in this situation. But, uh, generally when you get to the late game, you're quite okay versus Bird with this deck. Um, the, there's a guy on the Pauper Discord uh, who plays a red-black version of Tortured Existence. That version, I uh, expect, has a much better Bird matchup. Firstly because it has Terminate and Lightning Bolt in it, so you can actually kill those uh, Pinger creatures with more consistency. Um, 
and the other reason is that it doesn't have access to green, it has red. So instead of having commune with the gods and um, commune with the gods and vessel of nascency, it has a faithless looting and tormenting voice. Um, and actual looting spells are way better with this as your life gain tool because you get more draw options to dredge it. Uh, so he, he, for him he says that burn is like unlosable or a very very good matchup. I think for my deck it's still like slightly favoured but not as much. Um, so yeah that was basically like a huge tangent because my point is that um, Crow Forages is not necessarily just for burn or like the main reason to play it wouldn't even be to beat burn right because against burn this is maybe too slow um, so the reason why crow forages is really good is just it's a big body that um, like stabilizes the board just by entering the battlefield excuse me <coughs> so so for example when you're playing against blue red um, Penumbra Spider is like one of the best cards you can have because they have no way to kill it um, that doesn't trigger the token so as long as it resolves you have like a very stable board situation um, but that's not true for every deck so for example if you're playing against Mono Blue Dover they don't have burn as removal they have bounce so if you tap out for like a 2-4 vanilla even if it resolves they can just uh, bounce it away and then uh, you know you lost tempo on that exchange and you didn't get anything out of it um, and your opponent's just free to attack you and then like next turn maybe you try and play your Panopera Spider again and if they have a counter for it this time then maybe you just lose so uh, compared with the spider the forages comes into play it might gain you like severed life or something um, which you know that's like a reasonably a probably average number for this cut the amount of life this card will gain you um, and you know that's like a few that's a, at least like two turns of you know delva plus a theory or like a couple theories plus a ninja or whatever um, if it resolves uh, Obviously, we're thinking about things that might resolve, like a spider or whatever is comparing with these. Uh, so then, even if your opponent does bounce it, like they didn't even, they lost card advantage on that bounce, um, and then, you know, you didn't get too far behind because you gained the life. And then next turn, you can just try and do it again. Um, and then a four-four is not small versus a lot of the mid-range decks in the format uh, or, or the the fear decks I would say like uh, versus Boros all their creatures are like skyfishes and um, skyfisher, Clintor, palace sentinels you know all of these things straight up lose to a 4-4 uh, same thing versus Delva like the biggest thing is a 2-2 or a 3-2 Delva or a 2-2 Ninja or just a 1-1 one -one Flyer so like if you if you slam this down suddenly you gain a bunch of life like it's very easy to just say okay well i'll just start attacking with these even if you only have one right like four four is not small and it's going to kill your opponent in a few turns um just like you gained a bunch of life now you're out of reach to get burned out or whatever um and now you can you know the game is quickly turned in your favor just by resolving this um, and that's not true with a card like Gnaw to the Bone. Like if you tap out for a Gnaw to the Bone versus like Boros or whatever, they're just not really going to care. Like they're just going to keep flying over with uh, their Hawks or whatever. But you're going to quickly lose the, the, li the life that you gained. Um, and then like you spend all that mana to not really affect the board at all. So, um, like maybe your opponent played the Monarch and like you weren't contesting it because you didn't play a creature, and they're even further behind, uh, things like that. 
So, um, this just seems like a really powerful uh, card to have in Pauper against those mid-range matchups, especially the ones that have reach in the form of burn. Uh, and most of the mid-range decks in Pauper do have reach in the form of burn, like... Um, the bleh, the Boros decks have burn, the Delver decks have burn, um, even the Mono Black decks have burn because they have Grey Merchant. Um, so it just sort of seems like the perfect card. Because against these, uh, these are the matchups where Spore Frog sucks, right? So you want to have something you can board out um, for Spore Frog, the two in the main deck. And in the past, this has normally been that like Thorn of the Black Rose or the Penumbra Spider kind of card. But I think um, I think Thorn of the Black Rose is still a card that you want on the sideboard because it's um, really nice versus control. But um, I think the Forages probably replaces the Spider now. Um, and is like a very strong all around good card that is helpful in a lot of different matchups. Um, just think of it like as a, like half of a Thrag Tusk, basically. You get the 5 life, sometimes even more, and like a 4-4 four, four is arguably better than a 5-3 in a lot of situations in Pauper. Like Gurbag Angler is the one exception probably, but um, versus Lightning Bolt or um, Blockers or whatever, 4-4s. Four, was slightly better uh, and then it doesn't do anything when it dies but that's fine because you can bring it back and play it again anyway so yeah the crow foragers uh, very much impressed me so going forward I would probably cut the Penumbra Sprider out of the 75 entirely um, and then try to figure out uh, whether I want dead weight or some other kind of removal um, and, but yeah, apart from that, I'm pretty happy with the list. Oh yeah, and try and figure out whether I want to play the Moonmark Painter or not. At the moment, I'm leaning towards no, but uh, we'll see. Maybe it will impress me later on. So yep, that's all my my updates on the deck for now. Um, somebody, some people were uh, seeing my old videos and messaging me on Discord asking if they uh, can get an updated list. So that's what I have for now. Uh, any questions, comments, please let me know. This is Life ITCG signing out.